Hi folks, welcome to my studio. Uh, today I'm gonna show you a recording that I did recently for a series of videos that I'm making for my own YouTube channel. Yes, uh, that is called Percussion Mits. Uh, in which what, uh, what I do is uh, I take a really famous and well-known song. I take the vocal track and around that vocal track I uh, build a and record a percussion ensemble. So the final results of a recording is a new version of the song uh, just with the vocals and the percussion. The song that I selected for this video is So Lonely from The Police. Yes, it's a song, if I don't remember wrong, from the year 1978. Yes, uh, the, the album was Outlandus Amour. Yes, and the original song is a power, power trio song, yes, in which uh, the styles go from reggae to rock and roll, yes? So in this case, I don't have the means to, to replicate that. So I went into a different track, yes, more into uh, Afro reggae and African ensemble uh, music. But first of all, what I had to do with the song is to take the, the vocal track and clean it a little, yes? Uh, and also, I had to slow it down, yes, uh, I think that the original track is around 150 BPM and I took it uh, to 120, yes, to make it uh, fit the um, rhythm idea I have in mind. So this is the uh, uh, vocal track, clean it and already uh, put into the rhythm. As you can see, you can listen to the slowdown of the original track and also um, the, different, the different regularity that uh, comes from the chopping the, the original track and put it into uh, the new rhythm configuration. So uh, the main idea of, of uh, using this song came from well, for something that I usually do around did before I move on into recording that is taking the uh, voice and try to approach it differently remember the original version of the song is more rock yes and reggae but reggae in a rock way yes and it's in a um, you can say in a binary subdivision yes so in this case I uh, I tried to go into, no, I, I went into uh, ternary subdivision. So I start uh, really basic with the, with the chamber, yes? Looking for a rhythm that sounds something like this. So if I play the, 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 the voice again, I'm gonna go like this. Takata, 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 kakata, takata, takata, takata. So that was the original idea to to work around from this approach. Yes, uh, go into a more percussive uh, rhythm base and change it the binary subdivision that the original track to the ternary of this uh, new version. So the second thing that I went to is into sync uh, the 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 song in parts, yes? Uh, what I mean, if you remember again, the original arrangement, the song starts like really in a reggae vibe, yes? And then when it goes to the chorus, it go in a really rock and roll, yes? Really rock and roll, heavy rock and roll playing. So I tried to approach the recording of uh, this new version 
trying to replicate the energy, not the rhythms, but the energy of the original arrangement, yes? So, uh, from the approach, the, I, I think of giving a, an introduction in which you're gonna listen only the djembe, uh, the bongo playing some improvised uh, phrases, and the kashishis and the shikere, and then the sun is gonna start growing up and until it gets to the uh, peak of volume and energy that is the, the chorus. So let's see the different parts of the song and how they came up. So the first part of the song, I uh, try to approach it as simply as I can. What I mean is, I recorded the pattern of djembe I showed you before. That pattern I, re I recorded. Uh, Shaker end, yes, like playing the down beats, yes, all equal without accentuation, yes. Yes, and then you have it, uh, the uh, subdivision played with the Kashishi. Yes, let's listen to the final result of that. So to make it more interesting, I divided the verse or the first verse in two parts. Yes, the first one that we already seen and heard, and in a second part, uh, what I did is I added uh, basically the tumbadora and the conga playing two different rhythms. Yes, and try to move the rhythm into a more reggae vibe. Yes, for that what I did is I used the tumbadora as a bass drum. Yes, what I mean is I play with a stick um, and a hand and, and I play something like this. What I mean again, as a more reggae feel. like this uh, ostinato you can say yes it's a rhythm cycle in which in some point I play two accents yes so around that I build the uh, reggae rhythm yes or the reggae rhythm vibe I was looking for along with that uh, tumbadora rhythm I recorded a conga rhythm yes to accentuate that um, ternary reggae yes uh, feel and it sounds something like this one, two, three, four. Yes, so let's see how the new ensemble sounds. So let's move on now to the chorus. In the chorus, what I did is I go into, um, you can say, an African percussion ensemble uh, feel or beat, yes? For that, what I did, I changed uh, several elements. For example, uh, I take the djembe out. I work only with the conga and uh, tumbadora. Uh, I keep the, the bongo that was improvising along the song. 
and I added a cowbell. So let me show you step by step what I recorded in each, each instrument. On the conga, what I did is I keep playing it as it was a bass drum, but I changed the butter. Now I play something more African like this. One, two, three, four. With that tumbala rhythm, I recorded a new pattern for conga that goes with it that sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So to give that more rock feeling to the that part of the song, to the chorus, I use an, uh, an Afro-Brazilian instrument that is the pandeiro, yes? That you can use it in several situations to replicate what a drum plays. And I try to play a simple shuffle rhythm with it, something like this. One, two, three, four. So with that, I get the punch of the drum set. And last, to add that uh, African feel to the recording, I use an uh, agogo, yes? I played a really common, uh, you can say, African uh, ternary pattern in it. Something like this. One, two, three, four. So that's are the four main instruments of the chorus ensemble. Let's listen how the final recording ends up. Because of the structure of the song, the original structure of the song is really simple. What I mean is it goes from the chorus and the verse and the chorus and the verse and uh, only has a bridge. What I did uh, in my recording is I played uh, one rhythm in the first verse, yes, uh, a different rhythm in the chorus. When the song goes back to the second verse, I make like a new rhythm, yes, to give like a new air to the song. And then when I go to the chorus, I go to the rhythm that already recorded in the previous chorus, yes? So let's revise now what I did in the uh, second verse, yes? In the second verse, what I did is I um, uh, work it around uh, an ostinato, yes? What I mean is most of the instruments are gonna play in this accent. So that's what the conga plays, and the chamber plays something similar, yes, but it replicates what a drummer maybe will, will play, yes, we're gonna play the accents, but we're gonna play some other notes in the middle, what I mean is... I keep the pattern really similar to the one that I was playing on the chorus. What I mean is one, two, three, four. Yes, so this new combination gives a new air, yes, and a new vibe to that part of the song. So let's listen how the final result of that section end up. So 
as I said, uh, after this part, what comes is the chorus, and for that, I recorded the same that I used for the first chorus. So let's listen now to the final result of the recording. you like it and enjoy it if you like it please subscribe and give me a thumbs up yes and also if you have a song or sub uh, musical production in which you need to record percussion don't hesitate on contact me you have all my contact information in the um, box of the video I'm gonna be uh, more than glad to help you with that so I will see you in the next video